Good evening, sire. Good evening, Zazu. Checking in with the evening report. Fire away. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Y'all thought I fell asleep at the wheel? You better think again. But anyway, um, I was reading this article. Um, you know, it was about it, talking about preserving retro games in 4K. So, there's one problem with, uh, I mean, and when 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 the government made the switch from analog to digital, right? Then flat screen TVs came in. But flat screen TVs, they can run 3D games pretty well. And plus, the manufacturers, when they made the TV flat screen TVs, they didn't make them to to, to handle retro games. And um, flat screen TVs, like I said, can run 3D games pretty well, but it can't run retro games probably. And this is where the CRT still has an edge. Your CRT TVs, you know the big, you know like them 36 inch screens, 30, 32, 36, or even a 40 inch tube screens of CRTs. They have an edge over the, uh, they have an edge over the flat screen, where the flat screen can't, um, flat screen can't run retro games, run retro games like our CRTs, CRT will do it. So. CRTs are still good, but there's only one problem with CRTs. They're heavy. And, and I used to call I, I, I used to call them things backbreakers. You know, you know, in the arcades, you know, they used to have like 36 inch, 36 inch was the screen that they used. The 36 inch screen was, was what they used. So if you had one of those at home, like a CRT, a 36 inch, where there is like a RCA, Philips, Sony, Mitsubishi, uh, probably view Sonic. If you had one of them screens, uh, you 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 were doing good. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you had projector screens, bigger screens, but the thing with the thing with uh, the thing with CRTs, it keeps the graphics sharp and crisp, and that's something that flat screen can't do when it comes to retro games. So um, CRT always have an edge, but the thing with 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 uh, with flat screen, you got to get a, like a HD converter. But even with an H HDMI converter to run it on a flat screen, you still don't get the graphics still ain't sharp like it, it is on a CRT. So if you still got a CRT um, laying around, keep it, keep it. But there's one problem: that's that little sucker is heavy. You need like two people to <laughs> to carry that thing. You know what I'm saying? So I think Sony made a what a 40 inch. The last one they made was a 40 inch, a 40 inch two, 40 inch CRT. I think Mitsubishi got one too. So, if you find one of them things, man, you better you hold on to it. But yeah, you gotta you gotta keep a dolly handy and and get some muscles in your in your body, boy. Cause <laughs> TVs is heavy. You know, I had I had a 36, 36 inch uh, Mitsubishi, and it was a one that big one with with with, with them detachable speakers that kind of like wrap around the TV and then you can like take them off. But I gave that but I gave that TV to my to my sister. But anyway. The picture was good. I remember, I remember even running a PlayStation 3 on that thing, and, and an Xbox 360, and the graphics was was sharp. And I remember running, uh, what was that? I think it was a Super Street or the Street Fighter 4, and the picture looked so sharp, it made some flat screens look bad, man. So those CRTs are still good, but the thing is, in order to use a CRT like in today's time. You got to get a um, a digital converter box, you know, to like to, to use it. Cause remember the signal went from analog to digital. So CRTs are still good, you know. If you if you still got one around, they're still good. And those and those are the only TVs that can really save retro games until the um, manufacturer they decide to take to take up that responsibility. Because when they built flat screen TVs, it was only made for 3D. Uh, or game, video games that are in 3D, you know, that's why you get that sharp graphics when it comes to four, like 4K and HDMI and all that other stuff, you know, but CRTs are still good, but anyway, <clears throat> um, another article I was reading, this was on uh, Game Bytes, it says, uh, Phil Spencer was saying that the Xbox Series X won't be the last, remember when I, remember I was telling you that the Xbox Series X, uh, that I was explaining to you that the series meaning that they're gonna make some they got more Xbox coming down the way because there were there was rumors of a um, of a PS5 Pro coming so 
Microsoft got the Xbox Series, series meaning that they, it could be more than three, more than four. How how many how how many Xbox how however any how, however how many Xbox you want. That's how that's how many it's gonna be. So the series meaning that there's gonna be another Xbox ser series coming out after the X. You know, so whenever Sony decide to drop this PS5 Pro, Microsoft will be ready. But anyway, so, you know, so this article is on Game Bytes says here, despite the fear that console gaming will become all digital in the future, Xbox top dog Phil Spencer has assured gamers that won't be the last, that it won't be the case, <laughs> excuse me, for the Xbox. It says in an interview with Yahoo Finance, Sp Spencer confirmed that Xbox future won't be con confined to the cloud and more consoles are planned for the future. So yeah. Microsoft got, got 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 more consoles coming, man. That's like just because we got cloud gaming, man. Just because we got the cloud, I mean, they got okay, they got the cloud right, but that didn't stop manufacturers from making desktop computers. You need desktop computers to do your work, so you can save your 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 information in the clouds. You know, so it's the same thing for console. Even though uh, even though digital sales was up like about ninety one percent. Since this COVID thing, you know, cloud. I mean, you, you still need you still need a console to run your to run to run your game so you can save it in the cloud. You know, so that's the story. That's the story with that man. Um, it, Phil Spencer gonna be making um more uh more um uh, more X more more X more Xbox in the future. And another article I got here is from uh, Squaresoft. This is from our uh, Game Rant. Games Rant. Talking about your Square Square Enix developer discuss various plans for 2021. Let me explain 2021 for you. Here's the deal: they just released Dragon, I think it's Dragon Quest, on the Xbox, right? Okay. Plus it's on the PlayStation. I think it's on the Switch, probably. Right. So the the uh, the uh, the uh, the Xbox, I think in March or March, March or March or April, they will be getting Final Fantasy VII, right? Okay. But they won't. The Xbox fans won't be getting Final Fantasy XVI. Okay, because that's an exclusive to PlayStation, right? But then Sony turned around again, and now they're getting this game called Athea, and then the Xbox fans won't be able to play the game for like for like 24 months, meaning like two years. So they gotta wait two years to play the game. They waited a year to play Final Fantasy VII, the remake, but now they're gonna wait two years to play Athea, and then Final Fantasy XVI won't be uh won't 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 be on won't be on the Xbox. But that is in response to what's what Microsoft did to, with that Bethesda deal. That Bethesda deal really hurts. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, sitting here reading up on this it says here, uh, Square Enix developer discussed various plans for 2021. As an interview with Square Enix, producer paint a picture of what fans can expect for Final Fantasy, near Dragon Quest, and more in 2021. As 2020 comes to a close, and every major release of the year has come out, many are looking forward to 2021. Well, looking forward to 2020, looking forward to what 2021 will hold. According to a recent interview with some developers from Square Enix, it looks like 2021 could be a big year for the company. And that said, 2020 was a bit of a mixed bag for Square Enix Final Fantasy VII Remake, and released in April to a critical commercial success. Near Automa hit a new sales milestone three years after its release. On the other hand, the publisher also released Marvel's Avengers, which was weekly received and played a part in the company's losing over 6.5 billion in 2020. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting about the Avengers too. But 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 I already explained the the Avengers situation to you. I try I try to tell you that you don't look at Crystal Dynamics, you look at SquareSoft and Sony because Square's a console manufacturer. No, no. So Sony's a console manufacturer, and Square's a publisher. So, uh, you know, Sony wanted to add Spider-Man to 
the Avengers and then turn it into an Avengers game because the Avengers game is with Nintendo anyway. But every time it's like, every time like Crystal Dynamics is trying to get updates out, Sony's telling them not to do it. So if Sony can get Squaresoft to like, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, to get them to make Final Fantasy VII Remake and have Xbox fans wait, wait a year and then turn around and they got Final Fantasy XVI to themselves and then turn around again to, and get a Thea for two years. Xbox fans got to wait two years. What that? What does that tell you about school, Sony and Squaresoft? So the reason why the Avengers game failed, man, they they they, they, they didn't think that the the Avengers Avengers uh had a you uh, had a large fan base, but to me it's like they were living in denial because. If any comic, any kind of, any any comic book fans will know that the Avenger fan base is real, and a lot of people were looking forward to the game, but Sony and Square kept holding up the game, and then you seen what happened. You seen you seen what happened happened with that, and then when the user base dropped, that's when they all all of a sudden they start doing they started trying to provide the game with updates. I, I the last time I played it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday, and um. I noticed they got this girl, this fe this this some type of female Hawkeye character, when the real Hawkeye was supposed to be in the game. But the only reason you, the only way you gonna play Hawkeye is on, until uh, the only way you gonna play Hawkeye is when Spider-Man comes out. So that's why the game failed, man. It had nothing to do with no player mechanics, man. It was a Sony and Square holding up the game, holding up the game's progress, and then holding back on updates. And then once you hold back on updates. The, the game to start to drop like ch 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 you know what I'm saying the, the user base will start to drop like this and then you see what happened from there so the the game failed because the, the game is not doing so good it's because of Sony and Squaresoft you know and then Sony Squaresoft coming out talking about they lost this amount of money and then they said uh, oh we didn't think the game was going to do so well but like I said before what, what were they doing living under a rock or something so it, it comes down to those two man because Sony and Square, they have an history since PlayStation 1. You can take it from there. So, anyway, <clears throat> another article I, I ran into. They want to. They, I played Resident Evil 4. The last Resident Evil I played, the last Resident Evil I played, I think was Code Veronica. That was the last one, and that one, that one was even crazy. But anyway, um. They want to. They want to. They going to. They trying to give Resident Evil 4 a overhaul. But my question. But now the question becomes now. What can you add to the game? I mean, what else is there to add? You know, the game is 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 per, is, is, is is splendid the way it is. But what more can you add to the game? And now the question. The question also become, if they add stuff to the game, will will that mess up the gameplay? So, um, Resident Evil 4. Uh, Getting an overhaul, I don't know. You know the game already got a nine, like I think a nine point five, nine point four reviews. So you're talking about overhauling the game again. So if you overhaul it, that means you got it. This it better get a ten. If it's not getting a ten, then forget it. You know. So anyway, um, I'm sitting here. This article is on um, uh, Games Radar. It says here, it, we're talking about it is easy to forget to forget just how far the video game industry has come. In just 15 years, from many, for many, Resident Evil 4 is still considered the pinnacle of its franchise. Engineer re, uh, re reanimating the former in a way a few believe was possible and transformation the letter for an entire generation of players and game developers alike. Stop right here. I'm not gonna read too far. They said Resident Evil 4 is the pinnacle. I, I don't think so. I think Code Veronica was the pinnacle of a uh, of Resident Evil. Resident Evil Code Veronica was. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Four had four had good graphics, good gameplay, good good everything. But where Code Veronica separates from four is depth in the story, gameplay, everything. Four. Don't get me wrong. On, in Resident Evil 4, that scene on the lake when you fight that monster, you were looking down in the water like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> and all of a sudden you just you just you just spring up, ah, whatever, like like one of them uh, whales out of water. But anyway, that was cool and all. Don't get me wrong, that was cool. But 
Code Veronica, man, on the Dreamcast had depth. It had a, <laughs> it had a story. Had the story was gripping, man. And the, and that and that uh, that Ashford family, they 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 are some crazy people. That scene where they um, that's just that that scene where they uh, where the two little kids was. Like playing with the uh, playing with like like a, like a, like a butterfly or something, playing with that insect, and they ripped it apart, and then they gave you that look. Cold Veronica, man. They say in this article they say Resident Evil Four. Nah, Cold Veronica, man. <laughs> so anyway, man, uh, if they gonna overhaul Resident Evil Four, they better get they, they, it, it better get a ten. If it's not gonna get a ten, then forget it. Leave the game alone. Now they could overhaul Cold Veronica because it was on the Dreamcast. But but then they did but they did they made Resident Evil Cold Veronica X, but can they overhaul it again? I think so. But in my opinion, though, I think Cold Veronica beats four any day, and that was the last one I played last Resident Evil. But anyway, <clears throat> next article. All right, where we at? Do, 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 do. Oh, so uh, you know uh, you know you, you know SNK SNK makes a lot of good uh, a lot of good. Uh, a lot of good fighting games and um you know they got the king of fighters they got the art of fighting the fatal fury series the world heroes the uh kabuki clash the uh uh, uh kazuna encounters uh what they got um they got the ninja warriors they got um they got they got last blade they got of course they got samurai showdown they got uh Got a whole bunch of fighting games. They make SNK make a lot of good fighting games, but now in their in their next in their in their season pass in their new season pass, they're gonna uh they're gonna uh they're gonna bring some la characters from Last Blade to Samurai Showdown, which which I think they should merge the two games, but separately separately both games are good. Artwork is good. I gotta give respect to those two. <laughs> them are. Those uh those those animators man they they when it comes to the, the artists that draw the characters man good job um, both games are good in their own right they're both good I I played uh Last Blade Hearts of the Samurai and I played Samurai Showdown one through what six you know I played Samurai Showdown one through six before they even I mean um, one through six before they made it 3D even though they had a Samurai Showdown 64 and a 360 but I played Samurai Showdown one through through six, and and those games got replay value for days, man, for days. And then the same goes for Last Blade Hearts of the Samurai. Both games are good, but now the time the the time I mean you got fans on one side that love the Last Blade series, and you got fans on the other side that love Samurai, Samurai Showdown, but then you got fans that like you got fans that like both games. So now the question becomes, you know, the question becomes, do we keep them separate or do we merge both those games into one? You know what I'm saying? Hey, I mean, wh I mean, why not? So SNK is SNK is bringing characters from Last Blade into Samurai Showdown. And I think the, ca the, the characters from Last Blade ain't no joke. Don't get me wrong. S Samurai Showdown got some got some characters that are hitters, but Last Blade ain't no ain't no scrub. So. I think it's time to. I think I think it's time, you know, to bring both the games, like bring both of them together, make it into one game, you know, like Samurai Showdown. Call it Samurai Showdown. Hearts of the Sam. Heart, hearts of the Samurai. You know, some something like that. Samurai Showdown. Hearts of the Samurai Part One, where you take all the characters from Last Blade Samurai Showdown, and put them in one game and duke it out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So that's that's my take, but I think it's a good move that you know that they're making the um that they're making uh last blade uh last blade uh uh um and samurai showdown uh, come come together. Both games are good, man. If you were um if you were a fan of the nin of like like Japanese animation like Ninja Scrolls, then Samurai Showdown and Last Blade is up your alley. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. <clears throat> I think it's about time that they that they merge that they merged uh, Samurai Showdown and Last Blade together. Even though both games have different play style and mechanics, but if you merge the two of them together, they can work. You know. So anyway, 
Yeah, man. Um, that's what's happening in the game industry, man. And um, I had to keep you guys posted. <laughs> you know, I don't, I, I don't think, don't think I th fell asleep at the wheel for 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 a sec. Nah, I might take a day off or here and there, but but when I take my days off, I'm like looking for stories to talk about and stuff like that. But yeah, um, even though we have the flat screens out. CRT CRT TVs got got an advantage over flat screen got an advantage that flat screen don't have and now uh, the choice now the decision now to try to preserve retro games in 4k and that's the challenge I mean even I mean even with the uh, I mean even with the uh, even with the um the, the, like the HD remake that still ain't got that still ain't got nothing on, on even with like say a Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD uh, remake, that still ain't got nothing on the CRT TV uh, version. You know what I'm saying? CRTs ain't CRTs do retro games really good, man. So uh, if you still like I said, if you still got those TVs, keep them. <laughs> but there's only one problem: they're back breakers, man. <laughs> those 36 inches and those 40 inches. If you still got them, if you got one of those, boy, you. Oh, you, oh, you in arc, you in arcade heaven, man. All you gotta do is get some speakers, a, a good receiver with some speakers, and you good to go. <laughs> but yeah, man, they're they're good, they're they're good, they're good to keep, man. They are good to keep, man, and um, fun to play on too. You know, I remember playing uh, Modern Warfare Four on on a, on a, on a, on the PlayStation Three on a CR on a 36 inch uh, CRT. Oh yeah, game runs sharp, man. Runs really, really good, man. <laughs> so yeah, CRTs ain't dead. They might not be the standard for today's time because of the uh, the digital uh, the digital uh, digital signal uh, for, for for digital for digital uh, technology. But for us analog, you know, it's still good, and you can still use a CRT TV in today's time, you know, <clears throat> to play to play uh, to play retro games. And if you want to watch. Uh, TV, I mean today's uh, today's uh, standard, which is digital. You got to get a digital uh, converter box, you know, to do it. But yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's the that's the, that's what I got to talk to you guys about, man. So I didn't fall asleep at the wheel like you guys think I did. <laughs> I was just look. I was just reading stories. I I ran into a couple of articles and I was just reading them for myself to see what they were really talking about, you know. And um, uh. I was like gathering information together so I could present it. But anyway, nice talking to you beautiful people again. Chris, still a Star Wars and Star Trek thing. Or the dark side. Oh, peace. Oh, I'm going to leave all the links in the description box for these articles. Peace.